So we've got some stock material that's arrived. So the idea is to take some inspiration and a design from the Blondie Hacks channel and make a machinist hammer. Naturally she makes it look pretty easy, but I'm about to find out how difficult it actually is. I started by making the handle. I centre drilled some steel as I'd need to use tailstock support later on. I then turned the end diameter down to dimension so that I could add an M12 thread. That's over five millimeters to come off. This is the first threading that I have done. I was expecting it to require some force due to manually cutting a deep groove at such a slow speed in a fairly tough material. But with the size of the tap wrench I had, I found it required much more force than I was expecting. I even triple checked my dimension, which turned out to be undersized anyway, and then I decided to reduce the diameter even further. Really, really tight. I mean, it looks like a thread at least. Whether well, it functions as one, well. we'll have to work out later down the line. So I'm going to try and use this parting tool to put some relief at the end of the thread. Today I found out what happens when the dead centre 
onto our blue location. It wears a groove in the end and your part starts having a really, really bad surface finish. Remember people, I did this so you don't have to. So I put the new centre in and obviously when that wore away, the hole or the taper that it was in had also worn away. So it was wobbling all over the place. So what I did was the thread to over length anyway. So I moved it back to the chuck, cut it down to length and then I used a centre drill to put a new hole in it and extended it out. Um, and I've put grease on instead of oil this time. I've also ordered a live centre but this one got here first so this is one I'm using. Seems to be running fairly true. So I'm going to give that a go. The finish on it is rubbish for some reason, I'm not sure why. So I may end up having to sand or polish that. So I switched out for a different cutting tool, uh, one that I'd ground myself. And the surface finish, it's a little better. It's not perfect, but I'm satisfied with that. And now we're at dimension, so uh, the next step is going to be to mark off a longer length where it needs stepping down and where the knurling is. The finned part of the handle needs to step up where it meets the top and the knurled part at the bottom. To do this, I use what I think is a thread cutting attachment, just to add a slight angle in there to blend the surfaces together. I used a double wheel knurling tool to add some knurling to the handle. I made this over length so that it could be trimmed down to length afterwards. Next I started to make the head of the hammer out of brass. Firstly I turned it down to size and then drilled and tapped the end ready for the faces of the hammer to be attached. Again this was done in M12 thread. Right, let's snap a tap. This is the next tap in the set. I can feel like it's going down the threads that already exist. At some point, it should start cutting. Yeah, there it is. It's mandatory to snap a tap the first time you use one, right? No? I don't know. I parted this off at length and then moved on to the faces of the hammer. This part will be finished later on in the four jaw chuck.
The first hammer face was made out of aluminium instead of copper. This was because copper was fairly expensive. They should be a similar hardness, so should work well as a replacement. The outer diameter was reduced to dimension, and then the end reduced down further for the M12 thread to be added. Question is, will it thread on? Place your bets. I'm thinking probably not. Well, yeah, as I thought, threads were too long, but. I repeated the same steps again to make the second face of the hammer, this time out of plastic. Oh yeah, first try. And it lines up and stuff. No way! Lastly, a threaded hole is required in the head for the handle to screw into. A recess is cut in the first part of this for the head of the handle to screw into so that the threads are completely hidden. And here we have the final product. It looks hammer shaped so I'm going to deem that a success. A fun little project.